Sally Mae would have been moonwalking on my back. You don't understand. Sally Mae would have had her way with me. She she be doing too much. I just I couldn't afford I, the loans. The loans aren't my ministry. I can't do it. Hey everyone, welcome, bienvenidos en Wagwan. It's your girl Jovi. Thank you for tuning in with me today. If you're new here on this corner of the internet, we talk all things tech and lifestyle. So if you're into that kind of content, take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this with your favorite techie. It would mean the world to me, seriously. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be breaking down how I went from being a paraprofessional to a full-time programmer at a startup tech company without a CS degree. So you wanna stay tuned. Um, I have chapters below so that you can skip through to certain parts, but I'm going to be interweaving like my story within some of these questions that I'm gonna answer. Um, and you kinda wanna stick around because you know, like you wanna watch the full thing. I'm from New York. We tell really good stories, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying, people from New York tell really good stories. It's just a fact. <laughs> so let's get into it. So my background is in marketing. I went to Baruch College, CUNY Baruch, um, and I got my degree in business communications with a, um, with a minor in marketing. So my background was in marketing originally. And when I graduated, I had a, I had a very hard time finding a job. That's just the truth about it. I had a very hard time finding a job and I kind of stumbled into the education field. So this is where I became like a paraprofessional. Um, I was working with kids on the spectrum for, and I did this for about five years. I did this for five years. So for those of you that don't know what a paraprofessional is, a paraprofessional is basically an aide um, in a classroom. They're not um, certified teachers in any way, but they aid teachers either in atypical classrooms or classrooms with children with disabilities. And that's where I was. I was an, a paraprofessional um, in an ABA classroom work with, working with kids on the spectrum and with um, various uh, learning disabilities. So I did that for about five years at a school near um, where I live in New York, so. I pivoted into tech around the time of the beginning of, you know, the Panorama, the Rona, how, whatever we're calling it nowadays. <laughs> um, I switched into tech around that time. I think like everybody else, I thought that it was only gonna last for two weeks, and when we saw it was not gonna be a two week thing, it was gonna be a little bit more. I was just like, okay, like, you know, maybe I should just dibble and dabble in learning again um, how to do certain things in tech. But let me be quite honest with you. Let me let me really break it down for you. Um, I was interested in tech in high school. I wanted to be, I, I wanted to go to this computer, uh, so, this computer science program. I forgot at which school, but I wanted to do computer science. And I told my guidance counselor, I was all excited about it. I'm like, oh, I want to do, uh, maybe I should like consider computer science. Now I'm, I definitely wasn't that great in math, but I was still interested in computers, which is kind of weird. So I told my guidance counselor that, and she just straight up told me, she was just like, no, I don't, I don't think you should do that. Um, I don't think you'd be very um, successful in that area given your, you know, your testing. Like, I don't know if you'd be able to get into a program. I was one of those students with a really high GPA, but very poor testing skills. Like, I don't know what it is about tests that make me so nervous, but my testing didn't match my GPA. So anyway, Needless to say, I listened to her. I totally listened to her and it changed the trajectory of my life because I ended up, again, like I said before, going to school going to school um, for business. I'm like, okay, well, I'll go for business then. I'll go for um, marketing. It just seems what it was. It seems like the best option for me, right? Even while I was in that program in Baruch, I knew I should have been in computer science, but by the time I worked up the courage, guys, by the time I worked up the goal, the audacity, it was too late. It was too late. It would it would have added on another uh, uh, maybe like three years to my degree. And who, who, absolutely not. 
that was not going to happen. So I just ended up graduating with that marketing degree. And um, that was all she wrote. We got the call that we weren't going to be going back to school for the rest of the year. The first thought, I mean, literally the first thought that came to my head was you can't go back. That's literally what came to my head. I'm being so honest. I just said to myself, you can't go back like this is not for, this was not for you. So I've been doing this for five years, but I was, I was quite miserable to be honest. I wasn't very happy. I was a little, I was unfulfilled and also it really didn't pay that well. So you already know I was not, <laughs> I was not a huge fan, but that's not to say that I didn't like the people. The people hands down were top tier. I loved all of them. I still love all of the people that work at that school and um, the students there. I had no issues with them. I just think that the work was not for me. Um, this was not something that I was cut out to do. Um, so I just ended up saying to myself, like, you can't go back. And then when school decided to open up in September, I put in my, my resignation letter to let them know I won't be joining. So luckily I had enough saved up for the rest of the year and I had to come up with something I was self-teaching from March all the way to the December to the end of the year and decided to join a boot camp so for context I joined um, boot camp in February graduated in May and then landed a role landed a role in September I'm sorry I don't know why that escaped me so boot camp started February finished in May got a role in September and have been working as a full-time engineer ever since um and I am so much happier where I am now it's it's a me season like wow it's a me season because it's it's a me season right now it's my time <laughs> I just am so much happier in this career field than I am than I was in my last field. And that's not to say that nobody should be a paraprofessional and nobody should work with kids. That's not what I'm saying. I think that you have to give yourself a chance in certain areas, um, you know, and when somebody tells you you can't do something, that's just not true. You need to go out and do it anyway. Like. I, oh, I often think to myself, what if I didn't listen to my guidance counselor? Like, what if I didn't listen to her and I just went off and said, you know what, I'm still gonna do computer science. But I do believe that um, everything does happen in its time. If I did listen to her, I probably would have been having all types of loans. <laughs> <laughs> to get through the computer science degree programs. I think that's the good part that came out of it. Um, everything, my time was redeemed and everything was kind of made up in those three months and um, of me going to boot camp. And um, instead of me doing a four year program, cause Sally Mae would have been moonwalking on my back. You don't understand. Sally Mae would have had her way with me. She, she be doing too much. I just, I couldn't afford I, the loans. The loans aren't my ministry. I can't do it. So um, with that being said, that's the one good thing that came out of my guidance counselor telling me all that. But um, other than that, I'm so much more happier in this field. And that's kind of why I dedicated um, this channel to people with non-traditional backgrounds breaking into tech because I just want to let people know that it's possible you can do it um don't ever don't ever let somebody tell you no that it's not possible like how how whack was that I'm never gonna let nobody tell me no again I'm gonna go after exactly what it is that I want so um yeah that's that part <laughs> Okay, so advice I would give to people who want to go to boot camp and pivot and change their career, do your research on boot camps. There are so many boot camps out there. There, I mean, a new boot camp is being made every day, let's be honest. <laughs> 
a new boot camp is always popping up somewhere somehow but please 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 do your research on these boot camps to figure out the right fit for you you do not have to go to the first boot camp that accepts you you can apply to a whole bunch of different ones so i would say um do your research and see which boot camp goes into the different languages that you want to learn the next tip i would say is if you're looking to switch your career path start um looking into languages that you would like to learn and try to find lots and lots of free resources i'm gonna have a video coming out with that in a few weeks about the best free resources for people who want to learn how to code um, for absolute beginners these are i'm specifically targeting people who have no coding background at all i'm trying to give you the best resources so keep an eye out for that and subscribe so you know when i come out with that video create kind of a learning path for the specific language you want to learn. I wouldn't suggest just diving right into boot camp. Do a little bit of self-learning first. I would say anywhere between three and six months to kind of just start. Like if you want to start with JavaScript, start learning with the free JavaScript resources and do some like diligent studying for the next um, three to six months, whatever your schedule allows and then go into the boot camps. If you go into a boot camp, it's going to be a bit too fast paced for you. They're going to be skimming over topics. They're not really going, it's not a deep dive type of thing because you don't have that kind of time. Most boot camps range from like three to nine months. There are boot camps that are like, I think the longest I've ever heard of boot camp be was like 17 months, but that was more of a part-time boot camp. So you want to definitely study before you get into those boot camps. The last tip I would have is start networking with people now, people in the positions that you want to be. And this is um, software engineering, da data analysts, um, cybersecurity, whatever you're looking into get getting into, talk to the people who are currently in those roles and ask them questions, um, go on an inter informational interview with them. So you wanna be able to see what a typical day looks like for someone who's experienced in that field and that'll be able to help you navigate like okay so and so says this so and so says that um maybe the right path is to go this way the main point of this is so that you can make connections and kind of build a community that you can lean on when you actually do start the job hunt because while you're self-learning right you're self-teaching and creating your own path to learn a specific language and you know the type of position you're looking for what kind of companies you want to aim for that will help you um, get to know those people in those industries and they can ultimately help you when you are done with your boot camp so to wrap that up I would say make connections um, create a learning path and definitely do some research on boot camps um, and that will help you get a start on your journey to becoming an engineer. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I ask that you please subscribe, share this video, like this video, do all the things, um, comment anything you want me to uh, go into next. Um, thank you for listening to my story. Please share your story if you're currently in boot camp or you're thinking about going to boot camp. Comment below. I answer every single comment. So let me know and I'll see you next time.